watched my videos for a while will probably know that I am a Protestant. Now for those who are listening to this or watching this who are unsure what that means, a Protestant is basically defined as protesting against the Catholic Church and it comes out of the Reformation movement in the 16th century. Now I am a Baptist, a Baptist minister, and I'm a committed Baptist. I really do genuinely believe that the Baptist approach to church and scripture is the best. It's one of the reasons why I decided to become a Baptist minister. I was so encouraged when I read through the history of church history and saw the courage and strength of the early Baptists. And I saw the way that they stood against tyranny, the way they stood against uh, impositions on the church, the way they defined the limits of the state and the limits of the church, and the way that they really stuck it to the authoritarians in their era. And I was so inspired by that and so encouraged by that that I decided that I wanted to be a Baptist minister because of the legacy that the Baptist Church had, especially in its first couple of centuries. But as a Protestant, uh, there are some things about the Protestant Church which are, which are issues, and they're not the same sort of issues that you have in the Catholic Church. So one of the things that the Catholic Church gets really well, or gets done really well, or understands really well, is intellectualism. And that is that the intellect matters, and training the intellect matters. Now, obviously, this can go too far. We see in today's culture this cult of the expert, where in particular fields it has to be the expert which speaks, which decrees that which is true or that which is not. That's a misunderstanding of what it means to be intellectual. See, in a well-balanced society, people understand that you do not have to be an expert in a particular scientific field to be able to critique it. You do not have to be an expert in a particular medical field to be able to critique it. You do not have to be an expert in a particular theological field to be able to critique it. And people know this in, in some things. For example, it, it is not uncommon to hear people critique the beliefs of pastors of whatever denomination because people have access to the Word of God and they know that they can challenge it. And there's nothing wrong with this. But what people in the Protestant church tend to get wrong is the importance of training the intellect and being able to train your mind to deal with complex and difficult issues of varying kinds. Now obviously different people are going to be able to do this to different degrees, but as a Protestant, as a Baptist, as, as, as a, a Christian from the Reformation, we all believe that we have the Word of God and that the Word of God is to be read by all believers and directed to all believers. And I want to share with you some insights from my devotions recently from the book of Proverbs. I've shared a couple of videos so far that also come from the book of Proverbs. Here's something else that I want to share. This is in Proverbs 15 and it says in verse 14, the heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. It's particularly the first part of this Proverbs which I want to address. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. But the heart of a wise intellectual pursuit is not the idea that you know everything. It's the idea that the more you learn, the less you realize you know. And so the heart of him that have understanding, the heart of him that hath understanding recognizes there is so much to learn, so much we need to know, so we need to seek it out. Look at this. The heart of him that have understanding seeketh knowledge. To think that you know, therefore you do not have to seek knowledge is foolishness, it is arrogance. But the mouth of the fools feedeth on foolishness. One form of foolishness is recognizing or not recognizing your limits. We can't know everything possible. There are so many things that I've learned in the last couple of years that I wouldn't have even dreamed of in the years beforehand because there is so much knowledge out there, so many things that people uh, gather and, and teach and, and write on and, and, and you can learn about. It's, there is such a wealth of knowledge. But the true intellectual is not someone who knows things, it's someone who understands the need to seek out knowledge and to do it diligently. And w there's a few other proverbs in this very context. Folly is the joy of him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. See, again and again, the proverbs teach us to be people of understanding, people of knowledge, people who are learning. Now, I'm the son of a tradesman, and I grew up in a working class neighborhood. And to me, 
learning to work with your hands is a form of understanding, it is a form of knowledge, and it's something that we should all seek to learn to one degree or another. Now, some people are more skilled at this than others. My dad can build pretty much anything. I'm not a very good builder. I can do some basic stuff, but I'm not skilled in this area. But I would, I would argue that working with your hands brings understanding and brings knowledge. There's a, there's a knowledge and skill that goes with that that is necessary. But the thing is, this passage in Proverbs isn't encouraging that. And here's why. Verse 28. The heart of the righteous studieth to an answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The heart of the righteous studieth to an answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. See, we need to value what you can learn from learning hard work, and we all need to do it. In fact, academics should be made to do hard work more often. It would teach them appreciate many things. But we can't disdain learning. And one of the flaws in the Protestant church that I have seen over my years is this disdain of the learning. And it's a misunderstanding. See, there is a correct disdain of the arrogance of experts. That is a correct way to be. We should disdain the arrogance of the experts who think they are the only ones who can speak in a particular area. Now, if you're going to debate with experts, you need to really know what you're talking about. But you do not have to be an expert to understand that there can be critiques in particular areas of science, medicine, or other, other areas that you're not an expert in. I mean, one of, the, one of the things that we see throughout history is that often those who made advances in particular fields were not experts, they were generalists. They had a general understanding of, of different sciences and they were able to draw all this and bring it together. And we used to have a term for this, it was called the Renaissance Man, a man who set his heart and mind to learn many different things and create a balanced way of approaching knowledge. And I think we need to see more of this in the Protestant Church. You know, knowledge isn't everything. There are going to be people in heaven who didn't know a lot, didn't read a lot didn't study a lot. In fact, there was a time when not everybody could read. This isn't about salvation. It's about wisdom. And the Bible teaches us to seek after knowledge with passion. Now, some people are going to enjoy this more than others, and there are different ways to do it. But we live in a day where the wealth of knowledge and information is incredible, and yet people refuse to seek it out. And I find that interesting. Look, he says here in Proverbs 19, verse 2, also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and that he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity, this is verse 1, than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. We shouldn't scorn knowledge. We should scorn arrogance. We should scorn arrogance about knowledge. But if we go back to the very first proverb we looked at, the heart of him that have understanding seeketh knowledge. The person who is wise in their use of their intellect is not someone who thinks they know everything. It's someone who understands how much they do not know, and therefore they seek knowledge. We all only know a very little amount of what is in this world. How foolish is it to scorn studiously learning more about the world that we live in and, and the knowledge that comes with that. When we come back to those Baptists, those early Baptists which inspired me, what really inspired me, one of the big things that really inspired me about these men is that they weren't all of noble birth. They weren't all of educate, of university education. They weren't all doctors or, or, or masters in the learned arts. Many of them were simple men, bootmakers or men of other similar trades who understood that knowledge was not reserved just for those in ivory towers. Knowledge could be accessed by anyone. They understood what Proverbs 15 verse 12 says, a scorner loveth not, sorry, 15 verse 14, the heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. They understood that to be a man of understanding was not necessarily to be a man who came from a great university. To be a man of understanding was someone who knew you had to seek after knowledge. They were dedicated to studying God's Word, getting into God's Word, and understanding the things of God's Word, and applying that to their lives, but also to seek after other knowledge. They understood that even the tradesman could dedicate his time to studying. Now, I understand not everyone is going to study as much 
as some people who really enjoy it. Some people love to study. Some people just love to read for long periods of time. But we live in a day and age where knowledge is there for all of us to access really easily. And there's powerful knowledge which we can apply to our lives and use in many different ways. And why did God give us a book if he didn't want us to study? At the very least, study this. I know some people who don't even read the Bible. I would, I would encourage people that they need to not just read the Bible, to read much and to read widely and to read books of many different topics so that we can learn and have a breadth of knowledge. But at the end of the day, those early Baptists understood something very important. Knowledge was not the reserve of the academic. Intellectual, honing the intellect was not the prowess of the ivory tower PhD. It was something which God encourages us all to do. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. Let me encourage you to be someone who seeks after knowledge. Let me encourage you to seek it with all your heart. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Get knowledge. That's from Proverbs chapter 4. Bless you. Bless you.